Lieutenant Morales, the bane of people's existence back in 2016, Focus Morales. Now Morales has fallen off because why? Why has Morales fallen off? Why is Morales not considered good? I don't think Morales is as bad as people think she is. And I think the reason people think she's bad is because they don't realize the power of other builds. Not only that, but they buffed one of her talents at level 7 not long ago, which I think makes her more viable. She's terrible against AoE, or is she? She's subpar against, you know, just sustaining because she eventually run in, runs out of energy. Or does she? I want to talk to you guys about why Morales might actually be better than you realize. I actually like Morales when I play her. She is kind of hard to play because you have to know who to heal, when to heal them, when to safeguard them, and you better know how to auto attack. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Okay, first things first, her healing beam. This is ridiculously good healing, okay? There's a couple things you have to know. If I heal somebody to 100% every single time, I, I'm like, I got to heal this person up to 90 before I can heal you, man. You're doing it wrong, okay? If, if I'm saving somebody's life and they have walked past me to retreat and they're at 50% health, that's more than enough to live. I need to change targets. There is nothing more demoralizing Demoral moralizing than watching somebody full heal somebody before they switch targets. If you're doing that, you are doing it catastrophically wrong unless there's just absolutely nobody around. You have to pretend like you're just dishing it out to everybody. If my Vala is at 60% and my, my Muradin is at 40%, Muradin has effectively more health than my Vala. Just because the bars might look different doesn't necessarily mean that. These are all things you have to calculate as a healer and more so as Morales. I need to balance and get as much value out of my energy as possible. If I'm not getting maximum value, look, if I use my entire beam to heal up one target to 90%, everybody else is at 50 or lower, I've now wasted my entire bar healing up one and a half people and I'm doing this terribly wrong. Stop doing that. Learn to try and divvy it out. Heal this person, then heal that person, then heal that person. If I can't heal that person and I have to heal this person, save the safeguard for another. Sometimes you need to safeguard and heal the exact same target because they're getting blasted. Regardless, you have to learn that just healing somebody to 100% is not necessarily uh, not necessary as Morales. You can heal them to 70 to 80% and then switch targets. Make sure you're healing the right targets. Another thing, you can heal minions. One of the few people that can heal minions. Why is that a good thing? Why is it a bad thing? Morales gets 2% of her health, maximum health per second whenever she's healing. That's her only way of healing herself, which makes it really hard and makes her vulnerable to dive, which is where your safeguard comes in. One tip about your healing beam that you should know, you absolutely should know. If I'm healing somebody at 100% health, I am not spending energy. Therefore, I'm healing for free. So if I have somebody standing beside, I'm at 70% health and I have a 100% health target and we're not fighting. I can heal a minion, I can heal something else. And I don't lose energy because I only expend energy when I'm healing them. I can keep the beam on them, but if they're at 100%, I'm no longer spending energy and I get to heal about it or I get to heal. Safeguard priority targets that are getting blown up. This is very good. This is one of the most OP talents. I hate playing against a Morales because it's so hard to judge this. I have to look for when safeguard goes out and then try and dive. Displacement grenade. Try not to use this when you have AOE damage dealers because moving stuff for the sake of damage is pretty bad. A lot of people love grenade build. We're not going to talk about grenade build because I think it's the inferior build. Is there a place for a grenade build? Sure. This is not it though. I'm going to tell you a better build that will work the majority of the time. Using this to help interrupt stuff like mosh pit, using this to displace somebody, shooting it behind the target, knocking them back into your teammate is good. Interrupting somebody that's living on top of your, your damage dealers, a Sonya, a Thrall, you knock them back so that they're not taking auto from melee. 
so many different uses out of it. Stim drone and Medivac, we'll get into that in a minute, but just don't forget about that. So Morales, her biggest downfall is I've got enough energy to help you guys and that's about it. I've got enough energy to heal and once that I'm, I'm alt pinging, I'm alt left clicking my energy bar and letting everybody know I'm at 5% energy and I can't heal anymore. That is the biggest downside to Morales, the biggest crux that you possibly have. The way to get around that is to learn to auto attack. If you hate auto attacking and you don't know how to auto attack, don't play this hero because this is the build that will get you there. This Caduceus feedback increases auto attack range by 1.1 and basic attacks against heroes generate four energy. I cannot tell you how good this is. It is actually insane. I played a game on stream earlier today to showcase this. We out healed an Ariel by a mile, and that doesn't even count the damage reduction from my armor that I was dishing out throughout the game. Mind you, I was also playing versus a Lunara, which is generally Morales' weak point, but we'll talk about that in a second because it's not as bad anymore. Caduceus feedback is the way to go. This is how you heal and keep healing. I heal, I heal, I heal, and guess what? I heal some more. Why? Because I'm healing and auto attacking. This allows me to do things I've never been able to do as Morales. Truth be told, this has been around for a very long time, but everybody loves this grenade build. Hit heroes with displacement grenade. After you hit up to 30, you get bigger area and you get cooldown reduction on this. Why is this good? It's good because Blast Shield is a thing, and then all of her level 13 talents are here, and getting cooldown reduction on second opinion means it's good. This was a usable build even in the competitive days, but let's be honest, this is more about surviving versus the onslaught coming at everybody, the lack of focus damage that's generally happened in Storm League in your games, and this is the way to fix it. Grenade build, you shouldn't be worrying about damage. As Morales, my grenade surprisingly does about 210 at level one, maybe 215, which is actually pretty good. But I don't want to endorse just using grenade for damage. You want to use it, you can use it for damage, but don't try and be the wave clear hero when you have a Jaina or a Kel'thas because their damage is better. Don't sit there and try and do damage to kill somebody unless you know it's a guarantee. Try and use this for setup, to interrupt stuff, and do different things to help your team. Grenade build is a thing of the past. I think this is too much of a trap talent now. There is a place for it. And I actually think that there is a time where you have to go grenade build. There's absolutely a time where grenade build is good. But the times that you guys are all picking it is not good. Life support generate two energy each time safeguard reduces damage. This is also not bad against certain heroes that have fast auto attacks or something that you know you're gonna get ticking damage, a dot that's going to tick fast. This is actually good against those heroes, but this generates up to a maximum of 20 where I could just auto attack five times, not worry about having an 11 second cooldown because remember this lasts for a maximum of three seconds, by the way. And now I can get more than five auto attacks out during that time and I can get up to eight auto attacks out in that time, 10 auto attacks out in that time and feel pretty good about myself. Against the Johanna, sure, blinds and the small interrupts definitely is a pain. Caduceus feedback is far better than you could ever imagine as long as you're auto attacking. And if you're not auto attacking, you're not playing your hero. Morales actually has decent auto attack damage too. I, I feel like this is like one of the most unknown things in the game is that her grenade actually does okay damage. And I hate saying that because you guys are gonna want to do damage with it. Don't do it. Um, and, could, and auto attack, Morales' auto attacks are actually surprisingly decent for a healer, believe it or not. Get involved, get active, learn to auto attack. Now level four, there's so many different ways to do this. Taking damage while below 40% health grants 40 armor for three seconds. This has a 30 second internal cooldown. This can be good against high burst heroes or maybe dive heroes that I know I'm gonna have on top of me, maybe like a, a Samuro. But at the same time, Blast Shield can also do a decent amount for me just to get into a fight or the early part. Hitting heroes by displacement grenade generate two energy and grant Morales a shield equal to 6% of her maximum health stacking up. So this is where the energy generation comes from, from the old build. Cooldown reduction on my grenades into Blast Shield into cooldown reduction here, which means I can just press grenade over and over and over again. There's my energy. 
that's the old build. I think it's far too inconsistent for the average player. And I think that Caduceus Feedback is arguably better. That's the old combo that everybody's familiar with. This is still good for just generating energy and getting a shield. This is almost a very rare pick, a highly circumstantial one, as is Cellular Reactor. Consume 30 energy to heal me for 40% of my, my, my maximum health over four seconds. Caduceus Reactor is disabled while this is active, which means that I don't get healing from here because I'm only gonna get 2% per second, which means, you know, eight, if it ticks at zero, technically 10%, but at eight seconds, it's, you know, or 8% after four seconds. I don't really like these. I think these are way too situational. If you play Morales, you're gonna discover when these are actually situational. Blast Shield still gives me a shield, gives me a higher effective health pool, and it gives me energy. So I'm generating a ton of energy between Caduceus Feedback and Blast Shield and offering up a sort of protection. Why? Because I have greater attack range, which means that I can A move and more evasive patterns and have different angles so I can heal my teammates, hoping they don't outrange my healing beam because there are certain heroes that do that. And then these are very situational when I know that I'm just gonna have so much coming on top of me, but I think these are very situational that I don't really wanna go into it because look, if you're playing Morales early and for the first time, learn to auto attack, hold Q, and then use your E when you can hit multiple targets so that you get the shields and do a lot more. Level seven. All of these are good. All of these are good. How are they good? When are they good? Safeguard can remove slows from your targets and its cooldown is reduced by two seconds. So against certain heroes that have slows, Arthas, uh, even Johanna has a slow, but I'll get to that in a second. Lunara, Jaina, this gives me a slow and it gives me greater cooldown. So against heroes like Jaina, this works pretty good because now I have more against potential burst damage than maybe some other areas. I think this is probably one of the weaker of the talents, but it's also one of the most consistent ones when I look at the other stuff. On the other side, again, this is kind of a, a weird spot because it's not always good. Just because they have slows doesn't mean you pick this and why is that? Vanadium plating, increase the duration of safeguard by one second, which means I can now give 30 armor for three seconds plus one. So now they have 30 armor for four seconds, thus meaning that those heroes that are getting absolutely pounded by CC, and if you watch any of these videos, you know I talk about the importance of if there's one target that gets completely CC trained, they should die. There's very few healers in the game that don't have a cleanse that can take care of that. White main being one of the few ones, even though she does have a cleanse. But in terms of healers that can do something about that without a heroic and without cleanse, this is Morales' safeguard to an extent. While an ally affected by safeguard is stunned or rooted, safeguard grants an additional 20 armor. This makes it to where this will raise the skill cap of Morales. The passive on it is good enough already, but if I see an ETC sliding and I have quick enough reaction time, as a Morales, as a healer, you're always looking for that CC that's coming in, whether it's a slide, whether, and this is the one from Johanna because punish slows, condemn technically stuns. So if I put safeguard onto a target while Johanna is condemning, they're going to eat a 0.25 second stun or whatever short stun it is, and they're gonna get an additional 20 armor, now giving them 50 armor, 50 armor. Think Garage with one health, except you can put this onto a high health or medium health target, thus making it so you have duration for extra time and you have 50 armor. This is pretty easy to read against some heroes. Johanna being the easiest because Condemn acts as a stun and therefore it's easy to say, you know what, I'm giving 50 armor because that Condemn is a long windup. Very easy to read that. ETC slide, a little more difficult. Morale, Murad and stun, a little more difficult. Heroes that have stuns now become countered by Morales because you have the extra duration. It takes care of the CC train to give somebody 30 armor baseline for four seconds plus trying to heal them can mean the difference between life and death. With this, if you can get used to reading CC, which you, as Morales, you auto attack the tank and then you save targets. 
You don't have to go out of your way to look for big stuff, although watching range damage is important. Morales has a pretty easy job. I'm healing one person and I'm looking who to press W on and then I'm auto attacking and that's it. Vanadium plating is super OP if you can get used to it. Now, here's what I used earlier against a Lunara. When I'm going against that, because this used to be the biggest crux for Morales, is dealing with AoE damage. Morales, fine, it's like playing against an Uther. I'm just gonna sit here, I'm gonna poke you out, you're gonna run out of energy, I'm gonna do damage to everybody there, and eventually you can't sustain any longer, and your team has to run away, or you die. That's been the biggest part where Morales was bad. They changed this months ago, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is actually really good. Allies with Safeguard receive 50% of the healing done by Healing Beam on another ally. Reminder, this lasts for three seconds. I can use Safeguard while my Healing Beam is out there. I don't have to cancel my Healing Beam to use Safeguard. So how does this work? If this is 172 at level zero, that means they can receive 90 healing over three seconds, right? So. If this ticks at zero, which honestly, I don't know if it ticks at the zero thing, I'm at least getting three ticks out of this because even if it's a 0.25, that's 0.25, 1.25, 2.25. .25. So let's assume I get three ticks. That's 90, almost 90 healing, 85, 86 healing. Uh, at baseline level one, it would be about 90 healing. So 90 healing over three seconds, that's 270 healing. For, for the sake of math, let's say that's an eighth of uh, of a melee assassin, it's a sixth of the of a health bar of a ranged assassin, maybe a seventh uh, on certain ranged assassins. So I'm healing them for a decent amount over time, and this can mean more later on. Metadrone gives me now the availability for AOE healing that I didn't have before. The fact that I can use this, and mind you at level 16, you're gonna have multiple uses of this. I now have AOE healing that I didn't have for the first three years of my existence as Morales. And I think this is one of the coolest and easiest talents that they've come up with in a long time to be like, huh, that actually solves a pretty big problem pretty easily as Morales. I think it's a really good talent. I think it's an awesome talent design to bring Morales into the fold to make her a better AOE healer. So Vanadium Plating raises the skill cap, Metadrone versus a lot of AOE damage. I'm going with this all day. Level 10, Stim Drone has been the number one pick for a long time. This works with heroes like Phoenix, Raynor, Greymane, even Sylvanas to an extent, but that doesn't mean I always need this. Giving them 75% attack speed and 25% movement speed can enable melee assassins that have auto attacks. And honestly, it doesn't even have to be like your general auto attacker, like an Illidan or a Varian. It can be on something like a Thrall. It can be on any number of targets. This is a 90 second cooldown, which means you'll have it for once every other major fight or maybe every fight. It's a really long cooldown. This is pretty easy to figure out when to use it. Look, somebody's engaging. I have a ranged assassin with me. Boom, let's go. It's kind of like using Ana's nano boost. It's pretty obvious who I want to give it to, but that doesn't mean that I always have somebody good to give it to. I had a Sylvanas and a Chromie on my team earlier, and I'm like, I don't know if this is the team that I want. This isn't who I want. My Sonya can get minimal value, but half the time they're whirlwinding because they're staying alive. So this doesn't always give me the value that I want. The movement speed is great, but I really want to get the value. And for a 90 second cooldown, it's not that great. Medivac Dropship brings a whole different element to the game. Let's take away the Juice Pirates and completely put that in the dumpster because let's talk about the real functionality of this. Target a location for Medivac Transport. Somebody in my stream earlier said I didn't think of this as a cleanse. Let's imagine that I have a Pyroblast coming at me. I can hop in here and it's just going to hit basically nothing and I can hop in the Medivac and just kind of eat whatever's coming at me. It can be interrupted. It takes a few seconds basically to charge up. To reactivate it, you press E. It's after four seconds, I believe, that you can take off. Allies can simply right click on it and get in. We were on Towers of Doom. We just took down the bot lane. Mid lane was open with a Sylvanas. We medevac. Four seconds later, we're mid. We can get to target points very easily. We can get from objective to objective very easily. The problem is Morales isn't super popular, and let's be honest, most people don't know how to get into things that can move them, like Medivh's Portal or Medivac. So it doesn't mean that everybody gets in all the time, and at lower levels, I don't know if I can rely on this. I think this is really good. I think if people have half a sense of awareness or you alert them, I have Medivac, get in. It kind of makes you a shot caller to a degree. It can get you 
let's say I'm, I'm bossing on Cursed Hollow. I know they're behind on their boss race, so how can we invade quickly? We can medevac and get halfway across the map and make a lot of things happen. There's some cool plays here. This I rely on the macro side of things. If you can get an idea and get your team involved, go for it. If not, just go stem drone and roll with the punches. Now, level 13 has a bunch of situational stuff. If level four with blast shield gives me energy every time I hit a, a hero and I get a shield from this, then naturally second opinion works really good. Hitting two or more heroes reduces its cooldown to two seconds, meaning that I can throw multiple grenades out, get up multiple shields and get lots of energy back. This is really good. If you're going against somebody with shields, whether it's a Phoenix, whether it's a Zarya, somebody that can provide a shield, displacement grenade deals an additional 90 96 damage over two seconds and up to 400 bonus damage to shields. This works really good against Phoenix. It works really good against Zarya. You pop those shields and you make those targets vulnerable. There's different ways to deal with shields. Rip Tassadar after the PTR this week. But there's different heroes that have shields to where if the situation is right, this now becomes better. It doesn't mean just because they have a an iron skin that I'm just going to be like, you know what, the shield here that they're getting, I'm going to just pop this thing. Realistically, I might need more grenades. Maybe I've got a Samuro diving down my throat. I just need something to peel, give me shields, and then I can grenade again two seconds later because that's how I survive. You have to weigh those options, and I think that can be a little more difficult. Now, let's say I have a lot of control on my team, and I don't really like displacing a lot of stuff. Let's say they have a melee assassin like a Kerrigan something that's going to be very threatening if they get on top of me and there's not a lot I can do about it. While displacing them does work, reducing their damage can also work. This is kind of like tier C here or tier B tied with EMP grenade because look, this is a highly situational one where maybe they have a death ball comp and hitting them with a grenade gives me two second cooldown more control and the knockback's really cool, but system shock might be better. If that's the case, then I might be looking at my team needs to fight fast, therefore grenades give me more displacement, more detonation area, more cooldown, and maybe I go that route, but still second opinion is the go-to talent here. Level 16 is going to either synergize with your level seven or it's gonna be altogether different. Extended care can help you take care of, look, maybe I have Akira who's diving a little deep, Technically, they have their own self-heal, but if they outrange me, I'm in trouble. If I have an Anubarak that likes to dive in, this allows me to get in there. I don't think Anubarak and Morales synergize that well because one of them's trying to dive and the other one's trying to hold position. Because of that, Morales doesn't necessarily fit the role of the better healer in this situation. So therefore, Morales isn't quite as good because of that. First responder, I think this is almost always bad. Healing Beam's healing is increased by 25%. This gives you more initial healing right out of the gate. But let's be honest, at that point, you're probably not trying to burst heal somebody and that's where Safeguard comes in. Why does Safeguard come in? Because this is a really, really good talent. Safeguard gains a second charge, meaning that I can give lots of armor. And if I went, if I went Vanadium Plating, that's four seconds of armor to two people on 30 armor or potentially 50. Same thing for allies with safeguard receive 50% healing. This means more AOE healing. It doesn't mean that I'm just going to blow my charges of safeguard at the first sign of any remote danger. Sometimes if you can read damage coming in, I'll pop both safeguards and save a couple of people from dying. It doesn't necessarily mean that I need to use them both instantly. It just means that I have two charges. This is kind of an experimental thing to where you have to experiment with two charges so you know when to use them. I can use one, save it, get the second charge, and then use both of them later. Or if somebody is getting blasted and maybe ETZ slid onto two people, I can now put safeguard on both, heal the priority target that needs to stay alive, and the other one's going to have enough survivability. And hopefully when they come out of that, they have buttons to press that they have armor. That's more of a read on how many of those people I need to heal, who receives the, the healing, and who's gonna get some healing because I know that when they come out of that at maybe 10 to 20%, they're going to be able to press buttons and heal themselves or get out of danger. That does come from reading and understanding your team composition and can make things slightly more difficult. Shield Sequencer is really, really good. I pick this almost 95% of the time. Extended Care almost never because if I'm picking Morales and I need Extended Care, I probably should have picked a different healer. 
Level 20, there's been basically one talent this whole time, Caduceus Reactor 2.0. Increase the healing provided by Caduceus Reactor from 2% to 6%, so I get 6% healing every second. This means that I can stay alive, I can stay in fights longer, I don't necessarily have to safeguard myself as much in fights at this point, and it's really good. If I don't have any threat of the enemy team almost ever, then maybe I don't need this. So hyperactivity can look pretty good because maybe I have something that wants to fight every time, and now I have this on 45 second cooldown, guaranteeing that it's available for every fight, the movement speed bonus just a plus because then they can run people down and it's pretty funny to watch. Vala, Raynor, all of those heroes would love this. It means it's there for every fight and their impact skyrockets to get a lot of that really fast damage done. And then I don't have to worry about healing more over time. Safe zone, uh, this is I think kind of for cheesy moments, but if I need to be protected while coming out of a medevac, boy has something gone wrong. I think this is a bad talent. Reinforcements, a very unique situation to, this reduces the cooldown of medevac from 60 to 30 seconds, but you can call down a medevac at the Hall of Storms. You can read this. I think this is highly situational. It's if your team is at 20 and you need to win the next fight or you need somebody back as soon as they go. This is more of, I need you as soon as we hit 20. You just died. We got 20. We need you back in the fight immediately. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to go that because normally I'm going to be using Caduceus Reactor because this is if we just hit 20 and if somebody died and if we need you immediately else just look just be on time and get there i'm not worried if one person dies the objective is gone that's generally how post 20 fights work and caduceus reactor and hyperactivity give me those safe zone again kind of cheesy reinforcements highly situational and that's morales i want to go back to the part healing beam do not try and force it onto different heroes or 100% heal somebody, then go back. And then you're like, well, I only had 30 energy by the time I was done healing this person. So now I have one person at 50%, another person at 100, and another person at 60. But that one person's at 100%, I'd rather have three heroes at 80 to 90% than what I'm looking at otherwise. So you need to balance that safeguard. You have to learn when to read fights. Reading fights is one of the hardest things to do it's, it's similar to reading cleanse, right? Except safeguard is available every 11 seconds and I need to read, are they being stunned? If so, my level seven talent might come into play. If not, I'm gonna try and safeguard heroes that are being stunned or that are under a lot of damage. If they're getting pyroblasted, if they're getting hit by a pulse bomb, if they're being dove by Genji, these are things where I know I need to hold safeguard no matter what happens, unless somebody in the front is absolutely dying, I wanna hold safeguard for those moments when I really need it. And that's what makes it hard is that you have to read it. If I'm just a heal bot and pressing Q and that's all that I'm doing, and I'm just gonna press W whenever, I'm getting far less value than if I actually put in the effort to learn the hero and learn that. So for those reasons, Morales becomes a harder hero to play. But if you can learn when to heal beam, when to safeguard, you're gonna be like, hot dang, Morales is actually pretty decent. And if you're auto attacking and realize that the extra 1.1 range, that energy that I'm constantly getting means more healing throughput, which means my team is happier and healthier, we can fight for longer and I can be more of an impact. And I'm, as a bonus, I'm doing a little bit of extra damage. Morales becomes good. We're on our Smurf here, but we'll just go ahead. This is my experiment account. Maps that are open, for, for maps that are, and it's more team comp dependent. An Ana on an open map means she's more susceptible to flanks, which is why Ana's typically bad on Hanamer and Alterac. Morales, to a degree, falls into that same category because she is susceptible because she can't heal herself. That's why Ana's so tough. Healing yourself comes at the expense of a grenade or healing somebody for Ana or a, a grenade for a shield on Morales or a safeguard to deal with that. And you're only healing for 2% per second, meaning it's really hard when you're being dove, which is why Focus Morales is so, you know, old school. But in those situations, if I don't have a lot of dive, I think Morales isn't bad, which is why normally as Morales, I'm gonna sneak her in towards the second half of the draft. I don't need to pick her early because she's not that contested. Second off, it just means that, look, I can pick this if it's right. She can be good in a lot of games, but not every game. 
I still would rather pick an AoE healer versus a Lunara. I don't want to try and force it and raise the difficulty level because that. Altharac pass, okay, Volskaya. You fight on this point for a long time, potentially a long time. So you have to go with the auto attack energy build. And even then, that's not a guarantee, but you can last for a long time. Warhead Junction, anything goes there. Brax's holdout, not very good. She has bad wave clear. Eventually, you're going to run out. This is a longer fight than Volskaya. I don't like her on Brax's holdout, despite all the things I said about auto attacking. There is a limit to it. Towers of Doom, not bad. Infernal Shrines, not bad. Battlefield of Eternity, see the open map susceptible to dive. I don't really like her there. Tomb of Spider Queen, iffy because no wave clear. Hopefully, I've got a team that can do that, but okay. Sky Temple, okay. Garden of Terror, okay. All of these maps are okay, with the exception of a few. Try and fit Morales in towards the end of your draft. Don't force it. Figure out what talents you need. Read the enemy team. If they have a lot of AoE damage, and I'm trying to be like, watch me, I have this cool level 7 talent that allows me to AoE heal, you might not have that opportunity because your team will just die and the AOE damage is too much, and a few things go wrong, and then everything's miserable because you picked Morales and you thought, I thought this could work, and then you find out it didn't. You have to be able to read the enemy team draft, read the draft needs of your team. If my team is a full dive team, I'm definitely not picking Morales and trying to run in with that. That is way too hard. But there is a place for basically every hero in the game. Morales has a place. And I, I think that Morales could use a little bit of love. If you're a healer main out there, go give Morales a shot. Learn to auto attack. Don't go grenade build unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Learn to auto attack. Do the right build. And go out there and start healing like crazy as Morales. You'll find that she's actually not that bad. And that's Lieutenant Morales.